Netball is Australia's and South Australia's most popular female team sport, but at the moment it's racked by bitter infighting. A decision to drop four teams from the State League to improve the standard of the competition has angered the clubs involved, who say it will do exactly the opposite and seriously damage their sport. As Patrick Emmett reports, the battle now seems headed to the law courts. Give me any competition in any sport around the world where they relegate one of the top teams. You know, it's, um, that just doesn't happen because that's ridiculous. The State League Premiers for their first Premiership, ladies and gentlemen. Fewer people will be playing in the Premier League, yes, but we, we want the cream of the crop playing in that, in that group, so we make no apology for that. When tickets went on sale for this year's grand final of the Trans-Tasman Championship at the Entertainment Centre, they sold out in 12 minutes. And when South Australia's Thunderbirds won the title by 10 points, it seemed local netball was on the crest of a wave. But behind the scenes there were concerns that all was not well in the game. And the main focus was the next level of competition down, the state level. It's the feeder comp for the National League, a place vital for junior development. And when you watch the clubs train, the passion of those juniors for their club and the game is obvious. Great defending, Courtney. I love netball. I talk about it all the time. Like, your ultimate goal is to go to state league. They were my idol. Like, I looked up to them. I wanted to be just like them. Like, even from a little kid when I first started out at this club. Last year, the body that governs the game here, Netball SA, decided that the local competition needed a change. Oh, look, I think it's clear that in, in prior years, South Australia has uh, packed way above its weight in terms of getting uh, players into national teams, open squads, uh, underage Australian teams. Um, and over the last five to, five to ten years, those numbers have slightly uh, dwindled. We're back to probably where we should be based on population and the rest of the country, but uh, quite frankly, from the board's perspective, that's not good enough. A Netball SA review blamed that demise in performance on the 10-team State League, where some clubs were regularly thrashed by 40 or 50 points. It said there were too many teams for the population, and it wanted to reduce the number to eight to bring the performance back up. Paul Jeffries and Dallas Kennedy are from one of the more successful clubs, Oakdale, which won the championship just 12 months ago. Along with other clubs, they were invited to put in expressions of interest to compete in the new state league. They had to provide detailed plans of how their clubs would be run, including finances and player and coach development. Oakdale's proposal included merging with another club, Cheerio, to make them stronger. But a few weeks ago, when Netball SA announced its final plans, Oakdale was stunned. It was dropped. Yeah, well, we were gutted. The whole club was gutted. We've been performing um, on the court and off the court for years now. Um, we've got, we've been in finals, you know, nine of the last ten years. We won the Premiership last year. We've got our top under-15 side in, you know, finals. OK, Caitlin, I want you to drop right back. Don't even come out. As well as Oakdale, three other clubs were dropped from the ten that competed this year. Netball SA had already announced it was disbanding SASE, the development team from the South Australian Sports Institute. On top of that were Oakdale, Tango and Harlequin. That leaves six teams in the new State League, with the drop teams playing in the reserves. It was a bitter blow for Tango. When we first heard about it, we were really devastated. Like, I know me and my friend cried about it, so... Even though Tango hasn't been successful recently in the State League, it argues it was in the finals just a few years ago and has a history dating back to 1947. Monica Lam is one of its success stories. She went from playing with Tango to captaining Australia and says Netball SA's decision has left the northern suburbs without a club in the top competition, reducing the pathways for young players to reach the top. You have broken the dreams of those that are aspiring out in the northern area. Critics say Netball SA should have been examining itself more closely. 
They say in the past it hasn't given enough support to the clubs. I think that would be quite horrible to sit out on the side there and see a team get beaten by 40, 50 goals. But that can be cyclic and I think it's up to Netball SA to put some money into these clubs and assist them because really if they want the profile of netball to be raised they too are responsible for too long they haven't been responsible i use the word today of their contempt for our club has been it's been quite disgusting i would certainly dispute that um it's certainly i can't see how we could have been more inclusive and more supportive in the process graham gilbert is the president of netball sa the man facing the wrath of the axe clubs the teams that did miss out, it was an even playing field when they went into that process. All of the clubs had input into the KPIs that we were going to be assessing the expressions of interest on. And so I think uh, the process has been robust, fair and equitable. And the final review was actually done again by another independent assessment panel. He says players will all still be able to play the game they love. And he denies clubs are being cut off at the knees. He says they'll be given support to reapply in the future. And he hopes the team from the northern suburbs will soon be back in the top league. We are lifting the bar. And look, we, we, we as an organisation have in the past let mediocrity come into a number of aspects of within our sport, be it in terms of what clubs were doing, be it in terms of what development programs we were providing for the clubs. We, ne we know we as an organisation do need to do more to assist the clubs. But the clubs facing the prospect of getting back into the state league believe that will be very difficult. They say their sponsors and juniors will now trickle away and they're investigating playing the game in a very different court. I don't think that's, that's a good thing to um, go to court and litigate against your controlling body but it, I suppose at the end of the day we've got 200 members that we've got to they keep their best interests in mind. Um, and if that's the only way we can we can actually approach it, that's what we've got to do. But I think this decision is too big, and I think a lot of people from all clubs, whether you're in the six or you're not in the six, are just saying, "Hang on, this can't happen. You know, this is not okay. You know, this can't go on."